Uh, well, we've known for uh, probably more than uh, 5,000 years that being a bit hungry is good for you. So this is not revolutionary. What, what's been more revolutionary in the last few years is the discovery of, of biochemical pathways that actually seem to underlie this, this actual protection against disease and, and aging itself. Um, and so we're not so much guessing anymore what's going on. And science has gotten involved and we're doing more and more studies, uh, certainly in humans, but also in, in animals to see what best diet works. Um, and the, the bottom line, I get questions every day. I wake up to probably a couple of dozen emails about this topic. Nobody actually knows what's best, um, but, but we can go through them and, and I can talk about which is mm -hmm. my favorite as well, because there's, it's not just a science aspect, it's also social. Mm -hmm. you know, we love to eat, we have traditions, we have typically three meals a day and uh, trying to deviate from that is, is really quite challenging. Calorie restriction in animals and in humans is about 20 to 30 percent less than what a doctor or a veterinarian would recommend. Um, I also, uh, I struggled with that one, um, so I, I certainly wouldn't recommend it. It's, it really means you've got to be hungry for most of the time. And I'm sure you get used to it, but I didn't get, get that far. After about a week I got uh, too hungry and I gave up. Um, and then I didn't restrict my diet for many years actually. I had kids and that's really hard to do. But more recently what I've, I've done, which I find very easy to do, is uh, basically miss a meal once a day. Uh, and I, I'm not hungry in the morning, some people are not hungry at night. If you can go for, uh, say, at 7 o'clock at night all the way through to lunchtime, mm -hmm. um, based on the animal studies that I've seen published and some in my lab, uh, that's very likely to do you a lot of good uh, in the long run and in the short run. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the science behind it's really interesting, I'll come back to that. Uh, but there are other other diets that other people have found to be effective um, in terms of improving bio, biology and biochemical markers. One is the five plus two diet. Mm -hmm. Michael Mosley. Exactly. I'm, I'm sure many of your viewers are familiar with that one. Mm -hmm. no, that, that one is also quite dual, especially if you, you uh, have sodas and things like that, um, that can actually not just bubble water. Um, more extreme are those diets where you go for a whole week uh, say every every couple of months or every few months. Uh, I haven't I haven't tried that. I'd like to. My my uh, my view on that is that that's probably going to work the best if you can do it because it it, it doesn't just trigger the short term pathways that we've been studying in my lab. But a, a week of fasting will, will really start the body to start consuming its own uh, protein. And this is as you mentioned autophagy. That's what autophagy is. It's the consuming of our own. Um, biological material, which is typically uh, protein. And actually talking with people who have done these fasting regimens, after about three days, something different starts to kick in and uh, people who try this tell me that they have a feeling of euphoria and they definitely get an added, added boost. Um, but just let, let me quickly go back to why we think this works. So we've been studying in my lab for the last 20 years, genes that respond to diet, uh, to fasting and calorie restriction. And the upshot of it is that our bodies respond to adversity or perceived adversity they turn on these defensive pathways. It changes a bunch, of, a bunch of genes that switch on to defend our bodies. And at least from many different animals, things as small as worms and flies all the way up to mice and rats, these defenses of the body are extremely good at protecting us against diseases from diabetes to cancer, heart disease, even uh, dementia, Alzheimer's. These are things that modern medicine has struggled to combat. Um, and this seems to be the, the, a very simple way to get the body to fight against those diseases. Um, often I'm asked, how early should you start? Uh, in the animal studies, in, in rat studies, mouse studies, the sooner you start, the better, and the longer you do this, the better in your life. Clearly, we don't want to be um, recommending or seeing teenagers or even uh, people who are in their early 20s do this because there's still a lot going on in their bodies and their brains. But after 30, uh, if you extrapolate from the animal studies, then uh, the longer you do this in your lifespan, the better. And I'm, I'm just turning 50 now, and I wish I had started earlier. I, I wish I could. Uh, take some of my own advice and medicine. Uh, I think if you can have a light meal at dinner, a typical European dinner, my wife's German, she likes to eat small meals, that's great. Um, I tend to snack at night, so I, that's my downfall. But yeah, to, to be able to have that fast overnight, uh, that'll boost your NAD levels up, NADP as well. These are all good things. They turn on the enzymes that we study called the sirtuins. They need NAD to function. And you can use the whole night to uh, ostensibly repair your body uh, and protect it from what happens during the day. Uh, I also, uh, I try to take 
a couple of metformin pills um, for two reasons. One is that my family has a history of diabetes and metformin is very effective at treating diabetes and even preventing it. So I do that for disease reasons, but also because the work of many labs has pointed to um, not just animals, but tens of thousands of people in clinical trials benefiting from that drug, which seems to uh, enhance and mimic the, the benefits of fasting.